Welcome Math 107 students to the preview exercises for Lesson 22 on polynomial models and polynomial regression. The first exercise that you have here is a matching exercise where you're given six different equations and six different graphs and you're asked to match the graph and the equation without using graphing calculators if you have one. This is just having you sort of put together and review all of the material because there was a lot of material in the previous lesson on polynomial functions. So some of you may have started by looking at each graph and trying to find the equation or some of you might have started directly with equation number one and try to find its graph. It really doesn't matter how you start. But there were some important ideas that are going to help you identify which equation and which graph go together. Remember we talked about even and odd degree polynomials. That's going to be an important idea, even and odd degree polynomials. And in particular with even and odd degree polynomials, we talked about the end behavior of each one. So if you have an even degree polynomial, then you know that the end behavior either, well, and we referred to this sort of in a generic way as both arms of your polynomial go up or they both go down in the end behaviors as x gets really, really big or really, really small. And to know which, which directions the end behavior is moving towards, we looked at the leading coefficient And if the leading coefficient was positive, both arms went up. And if it was negative, both arms went down. With the odd degrees, we remembered that one arm went up and one arm went down. The left arm up, the right arm down. And in this first case, this happens when the leading coefficient is positive, And in the second case, it's when it's negative. So that was one way to just quickly determine what the degree of our function is going to be by looking at the end behavior. And are both arms going in the same direction? So if we look at, at number A here, at letter A, we can tell that this is an even degree because both of these arms are going in the same direction. We know that the leading coefficient has to be negative because they're both going down. So you look at your different um, equations up here, and here you have an even degree, but the leading coefficient is 1. So it can't be number 1. Also, number 1 is kind of a, a giveaway question because it's the only quadratic function and you only have one parabola. So why don't we take care of number one right away? That's D. So D is number one. It's the only parabola out of all of these graphs. Okay. So this is odd degree, odd degree, even degree, but the leading coefficient is positive. Oop, here's an even degree, the only other even degree with an odd, with a negative leading coefficient. So this has to be number five. Now, some of you might be saying, but wait a minute, we learned a lot of other ideas too about turning points and nut roots and all that. And that's true. You could back further support that this is the right choice by noting that you have three turning points here. Remember those turning points were also called relative mins and relative maxes or extremum. So I like the idea of turning points. So we have three turning points, and if you recall that if the degree of your polynomial is n, at most you can have n minus one turning points. So four take away one is three, so you can have at most three turning points. It's another way to recognize that five is the right equation. 
And the number of zeros or x-intercepts is another way with their multiplicities. That gets a little more complicated for some of you. You might say here I have one x-intercept, two x-intercepts, and you might want to say you have three, but remember this bounces at zero, and that would have a multiplicity of two. So since this goes straight through, it has a one, a two, and a one. If you add those up, you get four zeros. So again, fourth degree. All right, so let's move through these a little quicker now that we've gone through a review of all these main ideas. So here we have two turning points. Boom, two turning points tells us the smallest degree this would be is three. So we're an odd degree. Our right arm is going up. So that means our leading coefficient, A, is positive. So we have degree three with a leading coefficient that's positive. So let's take a look. Here's a degree three. But the leading coefficient is not positive. Here's a degree three, and the leading coefficient is positive. So this is graph B, and this is equation number three. OK, over here, C, we have another odd degree, because the arms are going in different behaviors. If we look at in different directions, excuse me, by looking at the end behavior. And since the right arm is going down, we know that A is negative and we have an odd degree, again supported by two turning points and the only other odd degree here is number two with a leading coefficient of negative one. So this is number two and this is graph C. So let's take a look at number four here, or let's just move along with our graphs. We've got, ooh, we've got two graphs left. Look at this graph. One, two, three, four turning points are extrema. Our relative max is in min. So four turning points means that we could have a degree of five. And we only have one degree, fifth degree function here, and that's number six. So E is number six. This is E. And by a process of elimination, we have an even function left, both arms going up, our end behavior. So our leading coefficient must be positive. So this is number four. This is F. OK. So hopefully. You use some variation of those, that, those different ideas to help you identify and match the equations and graphs. Okay, so here is a um, similar idea, but now we're looking at a context for a function. It's a cubic function. It models the number of AIDS cases diagnosed in the United States between 1983 and 2008. So it's a, the degree is three, we call it a cubic polynomial. The sign of the leading coefficient is negative, which tells us that at some point, this, this is modeling, this is modeling, um, probably wouldn't look like this if we had a scatter diagram. Might be something like this. We don't really know what the scatter diagram looks like here, but we do know something about the end behavior. We know with a negative leading coefficient that over time that this model, the end behavior for this model would be negative. And that is not a possibility since we can have a negative number of AIDS cases. We could drop to zero but we can have a negative number. So as we move to the far right, the end behavior of this graph over time would become negative. And this would be inappropriate for modeling aid, the number of AIDS cases in the long run because we cannot have a negative number of AIDS cases. 
So this is an example of model breakdown that we looked at way back in lesson number two this semester. Again, so this is what we call, this would be called model breakdown. So for this time period, 1983 to 2008, the model might be fabulous. This um, quadratic, excuse me, this cubic polynomial may be really fantastic for modeling the scatter plot between these years. But over the long haul, it's not going to make sense as time goes out further or beyond 2008. So if you were using a polynomial model to, to model, um, excuse me, a po polynomial function to model population size of a growing city over time, would you use a positive or a negative leading coefficient in Y? So you'd be having time on this axis and your population size on this axis. And all you know is that your population is growing. So since the end behavior is increasing over time, you would want to use a positive leading coefficient. Now we don't know if it's going to be an even degree or an odd degree because all we're focused on is the end behavior. And the end behavior for both an even degree or an odd degree function will be increasing as your independent variable increases. So we definitely want to have a leading coefficient that's positive. All right, so here's a scatter plot. Uh, we don't know what the variables are here, but if you were to make a guess as to the degree of the polynomial to model this data, let's say you wanted to pick a function out that would be a good model for this data, what degree would you choose? One way to think about this is to think about the turning points. So if you roughly had a graph that came down and looked something like this, you would see that you'd have one, two, three turning points, or extrema, three turning points. So three plus one is your degree, which is four. So you would use a fourth degree polynomial. I started writing polynomial before degree. Got a little bit ahead of myself here. It happens a lot. So a fourth degree polynomial might be a good model as a minimum degree. Now, it's possible you could have a sixth degree or an eighth degree and still have a, a graph that looks like this. But when you're trying to model data, you always want, when possible, to use the simplest, easiest model. So in this case, you would choose a fourth degree polynomial to model this data. And that's the type of thing we're going to be looking at in today's demo.